Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back my dear friends, a very good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you wherever you are in this part of the globe and hope all of you are fine. And today being 1st of January 2021, let me wish all of you a very happy new year and I am sure everything would be excellent for you in the coming days. Uh, my good name is Raghunandan Sain Gupta from the IME department at IIT Kanpur in India and if you, as you know that this is the lecture series uh, under SWAM lecture um, DTH um, program and the title of the, the course is Investment Analysis and Portfolio Management. So if you remember in the last uh, class uh, we were, last two classes we discussed about different type of, of combination options, both put and call, we had the bull spread, beer spread and considering and the different type of combinations you can do with the forwards also. I showed, even though I went, went a little bit slow, I showed you the examples how you can combine different uh, combinations accordingly. From today onwards, which is the 25th class, we will start off with the swaps and swaps have a typical different combinations where you can convert either an asset and a liability um, into the other form considering where is the higher risk for any party he or she or that organization will try to basically convert that risk in, in, in on a lower platform. And we will consider two main things, one is basically the interest rate and another the currency swap. So if I go slow in the interest one, interest rate swaps, you will understand how the currency can also be. Uh, done accordingly and obviously they can be combinations of, of other type of swaps. But the basics one, basic one I will go a little bit slow. So this is the investment analysis and portfolio management uh, 25th lecture under the SWAM lecture series and our lecture title will be swaps. That is the broader one, obviously there would be subtitles and, and discussion areas on different areas as I just mentioned uh, about one minute back. So our in initial emphasis would be on the interest rate swaps, then the currency swaps and the valuation of the cu currency rate swaps and also the interest rate how we can do. So once I go through the examples, I will follow the examples so it will be easy for all of us to understand. So what is a swap? First the uh, definition, swap is basically you are exchanging something. So I had one object or one uh, different type of financial instrument with some characteristics. So whether a floating rate of interest rate, fixed interest rate or a, uh, US dollars or Indian rupees, whatever it is, I want to change it to the other form considering my overall risk or the loss which I will face in the one which I transform my overall liability to the asset is much less than considering my initial position. That would be the main uh, focus. So it is an agreement between two companies, two organizations, two parties to exchange cash flows at a specified future time. So times are fixed and according to a certain specified rules. So the rules as I said would be whether I want to transfer money on a fixed rate or a floating rate, whether I want to transfer money in US dollars or Indian rupees depending on, on, on what uh, my main aim is. And a very simple example of our, our swap is a forward contract, is the simplest form. But the only thing in the forward contract is there is only, time, time is definitely fixed but there is only one time payment. While in swaps there will be multi time payments depending on what the agreement is. So, a simplest form as I said is a forward, both are a long or a, or a short and uh, swap would basically be a little bit more advanced form of that considering different type of assumptions we have and how it can be 
made or tailor made in order to um, keep the idea fixed that the overall risk for both the parties would decrease. But obviously, when I am saying if it is decreasing, that other party when, when say for example, organization A is decreasing his overall risk, it has to compensate uh, with some uh, sort of, of cost. So, that would also we will consider in a very simple and a nice manner. So, whereas a forward contract leads to an exchange of cash flows on just one future date and depending on the contract, swaps typically lead to a cash flow exchange on several future dates which are fixed and based on some, some uh, um, uh, agreed upon interest rate or the, the currency rates. So, let us consider a very simple example between two parties. So, consider on March 1st, 1999, a company enters into a long forward contract. So, I will be marking the keywords, so you will understand which, which party is selling, which party is buying, what is the rate and so on and so forth. So, I will mark the important points there. Okay. So, the company is going for a long forward contract and it is to buy 100 ounces of gold at the rate of 300 US dollars per ounce. So, immediately on getting the gold, it can short the gold at 100 which is basically the, the total quantity multiplied by ST which is basically the spot price of that gold at time T is equal to capital T. So, the suffix will always for whether for, if you remember whether for capital F or whether for capital S whatever it was, the suffix basically denotes the time. So, immediately on getting the gold, it can short the gold at the rate of 100 into ST. So, note it basically leads to a cash flow in just one future date. So, I, I go for initially for a long position, uh, long forward position, the company and immediately it goes on a short position that basically to balance the, the buying and the selling such that the prices are fixed in a such a way that uh, the party minimizes is, is losses. So, if, if I want to go for a contract as we have already mentioned for a forward one, if I have bought or sold any increase or decrease of the prices would basically mean a loss for me depending on whether I have gone for a long or a short. We have done that with, with the graphs uh, very simply. But for the swaps typically it will lead to different cash flows on several different dates. So, we will consider as I mentioned the interest rate swaps which we will call on the vanilla plane. So, and we will consider the currency swaps depending on the different currency exchange rates. So, for the vanilla plane the company basically agrees. So, basic assumptions are the company basically agrees to pay cash flows, different cash flows equal to an interest amount which is calculated at a predetermined fixed rate. So, this interest rate is fixed and obviously can be floating also, we will consider that. On a notional principal amount, that is the principal amount A value or the P value which is fixed for a number of years. So, that number of years can be 3 years, 5 years, 10 years, whatever it is. And in return, it receives an interest amount which is calculated based on the floating rate. So, I will mark it with different color and then differentiate what and make the, the differentiation much more obvious to all my, my viewers. So, it is going on a floating rate on the same notional principal amount A or P and for the same period. So, what is interesting for the interest rate swaps is party A or the company is facing a fixed rate in which it thinks its risk is much more. So, it wants to convert from the fixed rate to the floating rate where it thinks its risk is less based on the not the risk the based on on the calculations 
that the notional amount or the principal amount for both the transaction that means considering the company is converting from the fixed to the floating, the notional amount is fixed and the time duration is also fixed. It may also happen that the company thinks it is facing a high risk on a floating rate and the company wants to convert from the floating to the fixed. In this case also the notional amount, principal amount would be the same and the time duration for, for which the swap is si signed would also be the same. Now in both these example when fixed is being converted to a floating or a floating is being converted to a fixed, <coughs> it may happen the con company is converting its asset to a liability or liability to an asset. How it, uh, it, it is done? We will consider that in the examples which will be following um, as we discuss. While in the currency also it is the same thing, it has not been written, the, the, the basic underlying fact is same that the principal amount, notional amount is fixed, same for both the parties because there would be two parties. If, if I am changing from fixed to floating, there would be other party across the table which will be changing from the floating to fixed. So, based on that we are trying to leverage, we means both the parties are trying to leverage and try to reduce their overall individual risk. In the currency swap also, it will be changed from one currency unit to the other one. So, if it is changing from US dollars to Indian rupees, the other party is would be willing to change it from the Indian rupees to the US dollars. Again, notional amount is same time duration on based on which the swap is signed is same, fixed for both the parties. So, um, an important note here, for this portion whichever examples we consider, whenever we quote any interest rate, they are always in percentage per annum and payable annually. So, obviously, in case if they are paid continuously compounded, compounded whatever, the calculations can be done accordingly, but I will consider the simple example that percentage per annum calculation is there and the payment is annual and it can be pay, paid in between also in the sense even though payable is annual, it can be paid semi-annually, quarterly, monthly depending on what the contract is. And this calculation of the interest rate is nothing to do with the continuous compounding interest rate. So, be bear that in mind and calculations would be based on, on the point which is highlighted and similarly you can do the calculations for the continuous compounding interest rate also. So, let us come to the example. First is the very simple example, then we will slowly bring um, a third party, third party would be the financial institution such that you will be able to take the risk for both the organizations, but in, in this process financial, financial institution would also like to make some profit. Obviously, because if it is doing a business, it would like to have some percentage of commission from both the parties and there also we will consider few simplistic assumption. So, consider hypothetical 3 year swap, so the time duration is 3, so let us mark 3 here, which is initiated on March 5th, 2001 between Microsoft and Intel. So, say for example, Microsoft wants to uh, manufacture computers and it needs chips which will purchase from Intel. So, we suppose Microsoft agrees to pay Intel an interest rate of 5 percent per annum. So, this is the interest rate which I was talking about, it will be calculated per annum and payable annually. The notional amount is 100, so let me mark 5 percent per annum, the notional is 100 million and in return Intel agrees to pay Microsoft a 6 month LIBOR rate, LIBOR rate is the London interbank offer, uh, offer rate which is floating on the same notional principal amount which is 100 million US dollars and we assume that the agreement specifies as per the agreement between the two companies, it specifies that payments are to be exchanged in each 6 months. So, payable annually but paid after each 6 months. So, what we will do, we will first, so this is in between picture, actually what it is when we do the, the more detailed problem, it will be clear to you. 
So, what we will do is that we will first draw the cash flows for Microsoft and Intel would basically the, the cash flows, cash flows means both money is coming and money is going out will be analyzed accordingly for Intel also. So, because if somebody is gaining the other party, if there are only two parties, some other would be losing. So, as I mentioned, we will first consider the cash flows of Microsoft. So, I will highlight it with red. So, this is the cash flow of Microsoft. Now, see the table. Table is very simply made. So, on the first column we have the dates. So, if you remember it was decided that it will be a contract of a specified period and the LIBOR rates which is in the second column are assumed to be given. So, each uh, 6 months it is given the LIBOR rates are let me read it 4.2, 4.8, 5.3, 5.5, 5.6 and 5.9. Now, it is agreed upon that whatever the, the total amount, the interest, not the interest rate, interest would be halved and paid after each 6 months. So, as Intel has agreed to, to pay Microsoft the LIBOR rate, so I am not considering any, any uh, basis point above that LIBOR rate, basis point basically would mean some interest rate plus that LIBOR rate. LIBOR is basically the the actual uh, demand and supply interest rate based on money being exchanged between banks. So, Intel is giving, so which will be a positive flow for Microsoft. So, if it is 4.2 LIBOR, so half of that would be uh, 2.1 and the total amount of the notional amount if you remember was 100 million. So, in million dollars, Microsoft would get after 6 months plus 2.1. So, these values are given. Next, it will give get considering the LIBOR rate is 4.8, it will get 2.4 and correspondingly the values of, of the total interest rate which Microsoft is give, getting which is plus 2.65 plus 2.75 plus 2.8 plus 2.9. Now, what would be the, the as per the contract, what is the amount of money based on, on the interest rate calculate, what is being paid by Microsoft to Intel? It was basically 5 percent per annum paid annually. So, if it is being paid per 6 months, so 5 percent of 100 million dollars, so comes out to be um, and, and if it is divided by 2 because it is semi, semi annual. So, the values which are going out of Microsoft's pocket, let me mark it with green. So, it is fixed. So, minus 2.5, minus 2.5 for all the time duration, which was basically the fourth column which you can see. Now, if Microsoft wants to find out the net cash flow amount coming, amount going out, it can be both positive and negative net cash flow. The net cash flow comes out to be the value which I will mark in blue. I will just uh, highlight the values. So, minus 0.4 which is basically on 5th September 2001 is basically you the amount given out is minus 2.5 amount coming in is plus 2.1 so the net value is minus 0.4 now let us consider we, without uh, switching the slide let me consider the tra transaction and the interest rate transaction for intel now intel was giving money to microsoft so, uh, which were given as the red color and it was getting from Microsoft the fixed rate. So, now just exchange that the signs. So, if I consider Intel's case, so it would be getting, I am marking the positive one as red. So, Intel will be getting plus 2.5 
plus 2.5 because it is getting a fixed one plus 2.5 plus 2.5 plus 2.5 and plus 2.5. While on the other hand if the, the amount of money given to Microsoft by Intel would be a negative cash flow for Intel. So, let me mark with green it will be minus 2.1 minus 2.4 minus 2.65 minus 2.75 minus 2.8 and minus 2.95 because why this values quantum of the values remain the same because the LIBOR rate based on which uh, it is being decided between the two parties are fixed. And if I consider the net flow between uh, let me draw so the red one with black one which is bold is is for Microsoft and if I consider for Intel let me consider the black one also but let me make it dot. So, the values for cash flows for Microsoft are which I am highlighting in orange first the red then the green as I am going from the left to the right. While for Intel, if I consider just the reverse, I will just mark them. So, the transactions are this one, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth and the sixth. And when I consider the net cash flow for um, uh, Intel it will be plus 0 0.40 plus 0 0.10 minus 0 0.15 minus 0 0.25 minus 0 0.30 minus 0 0.45. So, if I consider the the total combined between them obviously would be 0 because plus and minus values basically bring the net cash flow for both of them combined together is 0. Now, this is what is happening between the companies themselves, but what is the background for that we will come to that in details. So, the cash flows which I have drawn for Microsoft if you consider the Intel part just remember the positive becomes negative, negative becomes positive in the sign sense and remember who is giving LIBOR and who is getting LIBOR, who is giving uh, fixed rate, who is getting the fixed rate. Notional values here 100 million dollars is fixed, time duration is fixed. So, for this example we see very carefully we notice that the cash flows in the third column are basically the cash flows for a long position long means depending on the, the organization which is basically buying and it is based on the floating rate bond for uh, the company which is willing to give floating rate and, and the other company which is getting the floating rate it is reversed. The cash flows in the fourth column are the cash flows for the short position selling based on the fixed rate one company is buying, one company is selling. If I consider from the other company's perspective, it will just be the reverse. The table can be regarded as the exchange of a fixed rate bond for a floating rate bond for Microsoft. 
which means Microsoft is going for a is read the last uh, highlighted set of words. Uh, let me use the yellow one. So, Microsoft is going long in a floating rate and short on the fixed rate while for Intel it is just the opposite. So, that, that means it will be going short on a, on a floating rate and long on a fixed rate. So, Microsoft has exchanged its position that means it reduced its level of risk because it thought that it would be facing a, a, a risk on the interest rate while and, and which was just opposite to that of, of Intel. So, it can be reversed also like Microsoft um, and Intel can face risk on, on the other part of the other type of interest rate whether floating on or fixed is immaterial here. You are just converting their position from one to the other. One to the other means from the floating to the fixed or fixed to the floating. Now comes the detailed discussions. So, typical uses of interest rate swaps would be they would be we will consider four different scenarios. So, I will mark those. So, in the first case it is a converting a liability and when you are converting the liability it will be like this you are converting the liability from the fixed rate I will I denote fixed rate by F i to a floating rate which I will denote by F l. So, this is one type when you are converting a liability from a fixed to a floating. It can be the other way around also when you are converting from the floating rate to the fixed rate. So, you are converting from the floating to the fixed. So, so when I consider the converting of the liability there are two ways this is one and this is the second one. Now, consider that converting of an investment on an asset So, investment and asset I am just marking with, with green and I will use a different color not the violet one. So, consider is as dark red. So, here the conversion would be from a fixed to a floating and in the, in the last case it will be a floating to the fixed. Again two scenarios, scenario 1, scenario 2. So, in total we have, I will use now, so this is 1, this is the second one, this is the third one and this is the fourth one. So, asset has two, liabilities has two, two means floating to fix, fix to floating. Now, consider the example uh, when you are using a swap to transform an asset and the liabilities can also be done accordingly. So, the scenario is like this. Suppose Intel has an investment of 100 millions that yields LIBOR minus 20 basis point. 20 basis points would be 20 divided by uh, 100. So, this, this will be 0 0.2, 0 0.2 percent. Afterwards enter, so if that was the initial stage, consider stage 1 when it was going alone. Alone means it was not interacting with, with uh, any party, it was basically has an, had an investment which was basically an asset. So, let me mark it. So, if it is an asset, so the word asset should be marked and it was an investment. Afterwards, Intel entered into a swap and had the following three sets of, of cash flows. So, it is going with a second party 
one was basically the first instant when was going in investment was basically doing it with with uh, whatever external agency it was now it is going to three sets of cash flow so i'll mark it as one this one the initial stage when it starts and i'll mark it as stage 2 why I am marking as stage 1, stage 2, you will understand in the later examples. So, it receives LIBOR minus 20 basis points as it is. So, let me, I think this will become too, too cluttered. Let me uh, put a blank um, page here and do the problem. I will be switching from, from the statement which is there to the blank one. So, this was basically the asset and this was an investment, this was stage 1 on the first instant, this was the second instant. So, what was the first incident? It was investing 100 millions that yielded LIBOR. So, I will only draw the interest rate, Do, would not go into the notional value because if you remember the notional values between two parties or when the bank also comes remains the same time remains, remains the same. So, these are interest rate swaps. So, I will only concentrate on the interest rate and show that how it can be done. So, for one. This is the company, I will use Intel here and it was as per the norm given here, it was LIBOR minus 0 0.2, I am not writing the interest rate percentage. So, why minus 0.2? If you go back, minus a value of 20 percent basis points. Now, come to stage 2. So, first let me draw it and they would be uh, other party also. Other party I would mark as a box and then name it accordingly. So, it receives LIBOR minus 20 basis points as it is. This is stage 2. This is Intel. Now, what are the second and the third bullet points in stage 2? Sorry. It pays LIBOR under the terms of the swap to some other party. Let it call, let us call it the third party. So, it pays LIBOR. So, this is the third party. I will not name it now. So, it is paying LIBOR. And it receives 5 percent under the terms of the swap from the some other party. So, let us call this the third party as it is. So, it is receiving 5 percent, 5. Now, let us see how it is changing. So, if you consider stage 1, overall problem which Intel was fa facing was floating and it was facing uh, the risk based on that. So, because it was only interacting with the outside party, not the third party on, on to the left if you see. <clears throat> now, if we consider the stage 2, what will happen is this LIBOR, LIBOR will cancel, but because it is going out and uh, wait, 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 let me check, let me check. Oh, it's. I am sorry. I it should it should receive. I, it's my mistake. My mistake. I am extremely sorry. It's. I apologize because I drew the arrows in two different direction.
because it was receiving it was an asset that is why. So, it is receiving and if the LIBOR fluctuates it faces a problem on the interest rate it is receiving. Now, coming back to where I left. So, LIBOR, LIBOR, LIBOR is coming in, LIBOR is going out. So, uh, if there, there is a uh, negation of both of them and the value of uh, the total interest rate would now be fixed. So, the company has converted its floating to a fixed one floating it was is thought it was facing a risk now it is converted into a floating was a, a, a risk and it is converted into a fixed rate. And when you calculate you have to basically find out and add up with the signs 5 percent and minus of 0.2 percent. So, asset has been converted for a floating to a fixed for the in, um, intel. So, this is the third party let me mention. So, there is a third stage also will come that is why I mentioned uh, remember this. So, this uh, let me draw it this stage 1 and stage 2 there will be a stage 3 we will draw it later on. Okay. So, it so let us again go back. So, initially it was receiving it was an asset in the second stage it receives the same LIBOR minus 0.2 pays LIBOR, LIBOR, LIBOR cancels. So, the overall interest rate has been changed from floating to a fixed. So, this was basically com company uh, B uh, consider considering and company A considering the situation. So, there is a, a transaction outside also which we will come to later on as we add up the scenarios. Now, see here in this case uh, for, for this example initially company A was uh, getting. So, if you if you remove these two um, arrows of LIBOR plus 0.8 which is going out from company B and 5.2 percent which was going out from company A, company A was getting 5 percent giving LIBOR. So, now company B was uh, was facing a risk company B was facing a risk uh, from the point of view of LIBOR only if you only consider or concentrate on these two transactions while company A was basically facing the fixed one. So, once they go into the, the contract company B has been able to negate LIBOR because LIBOR, LIBOR would cancel out so, it converts from the floating to the fixed which is fixed is now 5 plus 0 0.8 which is 5.8 while for company B uh, for, for company A it was facing from the fixed point. So, now it, it basically uh, gets 5 percent gives 5.2 and the LIBOR. So, it is converted to LIBOR plus 0 0.2. So, fixed to floating floating to fixed for both the companies. Now, the scenario let me show the diagram and then discuss. Now, you may be thinking what if one party does not keep its contract because the contract being signed between A and B. So, who will take care of, of the risk for one party if the other uh, cancels its contract does not go into the contract because due to loss. Here is where the financial institution comes FI. Now, whenever the FI comes obviously, it would like to have um, a pie of the cake and get some, some value because it is going to take the risk uh, for both of them. So, it will take the risk uh, on A's behalf as well as on B's behalf, B's behalf and there should be some uh, profit for that and this we will consider the profit is being shared or which is being given 
is being given by A and B on equal terms on equal value. So, how? So, let us consider the F i. So, I will use colors to do. So, only consider the F i, nothing else. So, it is getting LIBOR. So, because if you remember company A was giving B LIBOR. So, the F i comes, F i takes LIBOR floating rate from A and, and gives that LIBOR uh, to B. So, this LIBOR, I am I'm not considering A, B now, I am only considering the F i. So, the LIBOR, LIBOR cancels. It is getting 5.015 from B and passing on 4.985 to A. So, the overall profit would be 5 for, for F i would be 5.015 which is a plus minus 4.985. So, this is what it comes 5 0 8 3 1 9 1 10 0 1. So, this is the percentage. Now, look at it very carefully. So, let us bake into two equal halves and why I am doing that this will become clear to you. I will put an arrow with a different color B and I put another arrow with the different color to A because I will be using different coloring schemes to isolate A and isolate B and show that how they are sharing part of the profits which is being passed on to the FI. So, let us consider A. Let us isolate A with respect to this is the third case, third stage with respect to the second stage. So, this is the third one for A. So, in stage 3, it is giving LIBOR it is also giving 5.2 and getting 4.8985. So, this is equal to So, whatever the value is, I will come to that later on. Please wait. While for company B, let us isolate it again. For B, in this case, <coughs> so it is getting LIBOR, giving LIBOR cancels out or let me write it down, it will be easy. LIBOR, so it is, um, I consider it is giving as, as positive and getting is negative. So, giving, so positive plus 0 0.8, giving is 5, 0 0.015 and uh, getting is minus LIBOR. So, let me check the signs are, are correct or not. It is giving positive, giving 5.2 positive, getting 4.985 is negative. It is giving LIBOR plus 0.8 positive, 
getting LIBOR is negative, giving 5.0 it's okay. So, LIBOR, LIBOR would cancel. So, this is the value and here this is the value in stage 3 remember for A and B respectively. So, I will switch to the slide before and I try to basically compare them. So, in stage 2 So, I used I will use the same coloring scheme for company A. For company A it is this. So, if it is we used if it is giving positive. So, it is giving 5.2 giving LIBOR. getting 5 for company B is giving LIBOR plus 0 0.8 giving 5 getting LIBOR 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 cancels 5.8. So, this I will mark as a stage 2 for B and this I will mark as stage 2 for A. So, so let us copy these important values which are, which are this. So, LIBOR plus 0.2 for A. I will be comparing with this. Let me. So, which was basically. this was for stage 3 this was for stage 3 so let us consider 5.8 is basically for b so let us write it down, down the value so stage 2 was 5.8 which was going out and and then stage 3 it was 5.815 so the overall one for b is now extra which is being given is 0 0.015 which is 5.815 minus 5.8 so now check this value this is the extra one which is being given by B and it exactly matches the one which we have already decided is the extra profit which is the financial institution is getting from B. So, these match. These two match. Which is important to note. So, these are the values which is being equally shared by both. I will come to A now. Now, for A,
I am switching colors in order to make you understand. So, it is taking time. So, please bear with me. So, it was for, for A was LIBOR plus 0.2. So, if it was LIBOR, LIBOR will cancel. And if I basically find out this difference, it is 5.2. Let me check point two, right. Four point nine eight five. So this difference and this is the minus, and there was a point two there. Let me check whether the values <laughs> so five five zero one eight one nine and ten zero one nine one ten eleven twelve yes zero point two one five so initially it was point two in stage two now it is point one 215 so the difference increase is 0 0.015 that is the increase in the interest rate which is being given uh, by a when it compares its situation in stage 2 with respect to stage 3 so if i check very interestingly this value matches here so the companies have equally shared the profit which is being earned by the fi so there in in the whole situation the companies have changed their position. How they have changed the position? So, company A was basically getting LIBOR, it changed to the fixed one and other way other way, way around for company B. So, company B was facing LIBOR risk. So, LIBOR LIBOR cancels as I had shown it converts to a fixed one and company A converts from a fixed to a floating. So, usually these two entities, this A and B which I have done in stage 2, they do not come in touch with each other directly in order to arrange for the swaps. They deal between themselves through a financial intermediary such that as a bank or other financial institution as I have shown that. So, in this example it was basically an asset. So, A changed from uh, the, the concept of a fixed to the floating and B changed from the floating to the fixed whichever you look, look at it. They are, why asset? Because they were paying uh, some uh, the rate based on the investment getting an end rate. The com concept of competitive advantage for the case when a company wants to change its asset into a liability or vice versa from a liability to an asset, it is undertaking that with the notion that it has some competitive advantage either on the asset front or the liability front based on the fact that its main risk company is facing is floating hence it wants to convert to a fixed and if it is fixed it wants to change its position from the fixed to the floating reduction of the risk so either so let me read it so it has some competitive advantage either in the floating interest rate or in the fixed interest rate market this concept of competitive advantage is true for the case when we consider an interest swap only For the case when a company wants to change its asset into a liability or vice versa, it is undertaking the, with the notion in the currency one, in the, in, the, in the notion that it has some competitive advantage so 
So, it is changing from an asset to a liability, I am marking the main words or vice versa from a liability to an asset. So, it is a com competitive advantage either in the domestic currency converting to foreign currency or in the foreign currency converting to a domestic currency. So, this concept of competitive advantage is true for the case when we consider a currency rate swaps. I will consider the currency rate swaps uh, accordingly. So, if I go back to the last, last slide, so I have been do, uh, writing many things, so please bear with me if I am sh uh, shifting from slide to slide. So, in the case for the interest rate, so if it is an asset, let me mark with, with green color, something positive. For a, for an asset and for a liability, it is a red. In the asset case, you had the floating being converted to a fixed depending where the competitive advantage is or else it can be from the fixed to the floating. Similarly, so I have done one problem in detail, so others would definitely can be marked accordingly because uh, in the next class we will be doing the currency one. While for the liability, it can be from the floating again to the fixed, these are all interest rate and from the fixed to the floating. Now, again I will highlight, I am sure you have understood, but please bear, bear with me. The comparative advantages are, I will mark with uh, the violet one. So, it was not good for floating, hence converted to whether the red color, which color would do, let me check, let me use the red one, converted to a fixed, while in the case when it was fixed, it was not good, that means competitive advantage was not there it converted to a floating. So, the conversions are from a floating to a fixed, from a fixed to a floating. When I come to the liability one again, floating was not good, so it converted to a fixed. And the last case was basically fixed was not good, put it into a floating. So, competitive advantages as floating being passed on by one company and fixed being passed on by the other company. They have to be a party. So, I should feel more comfortable in floating and the other party should feel more comfortable on the fixed. Hence, we would go provided we were initially in a disadvantages position. So, with, with uh, this highlighting one, this part. So, we had con considered the one example and others would exactly follow true. So, in the asset case and liability case, the arrows we have to be taken care and only calculate the values. And last consider the financial institution would be getting some, some profit which will be shared uh, equally by both the parties considering they are on the same level uh, of financial levels depending on the contract. So, I will end this uh, 25th lecture and continue discussing more about the currency rate swaps with examples in such details like trying to break up into stage 1, stage 2, stage 3 so that you will understand in stage 1 when they are basically doing their business alone, then in stage 2 which is a hypothetical one where they come together company A and B and stage 3 actually the FI comes and basically 
negotiates the contract of the swap between the parties and shares a profit. So, have a nice day and uh, let me wish you all once again a very happy new year, today being 1st of January 2021 and all of you stay well, stay healthy and do well in life. Thank you very much.